Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition, where we're here to give you insight and information about the board games you might want to have in your collection. So today I'm going to be talking about what I think are the best games for two players. So, I play most of my games at the two player account, um, hence why this list exists. But I'd like to point out that not everything on this list is for two players only. There are some games that work differently at four or five player accounts than they do at two. And there are some that just work well at two and work well at four or whatever the case may be. So if there's two of you um, and you've decided you want to try play something, I think this is a great place to start. Now, I've not numbered these in any particular order. I don't play favourites. However, I have tried to order them in terms of weight. So if you're new to board games and you're looking for something maybe to play with your friend or your partner, um, then these first couple of games might be might up your, more up your street. Um, the later ones definitely get heavier, but doesn't mean you couldn't try them out and doesn't really make them any less awesome either. So I'm going to start this list with what's an incredibly popular game and there's probably a good reason it is so um, and this is Azul from Plan B Games. So what Azul is about is that you're trying to create a beautiful mosaic using these lovely little tile pieces and you fill in a pattern on your player board. Um, the nice thing about Azul is that you're kind of both of you are doing your own thing distinctly so you can focus on building your pieces. However to get tiles to place into your mosaic you do have to like perform a kind of bidding. So there'll be a group of tiles in the centre and you'll get to choose one then your opponent will get to choose another and vice versa. And while this might sound a little simple it can also get a little bit vicious especially when you need tiles of a particular colour. Um, I think Azul is fun at two players is because it is quite tactical because you can see exactly what your opponent is trying to do and you can try and outsmart them. I also think it's pretty, well pretty, um, but also pretty easy to play too and to pick up and to learn. So Azul is first on my list. Next on my list is Codenames Duet. Now take note, I said duet at the end, not code names. Um, code names is a party game in which one of you is um, a spy and you're trying to give clues to the other person to get them to say specific words. Um, when it comes to the duet version, it's a two player only one, which means that you're both passing clues back and forth to each other um, and racing to see who kind of gets them all out first. Um, I think it's a really really fun game mostly because you have to learn how to communicate with your partner which is hilarious all by itself. Um, the second thing is it's, it's a cooperative thing you're you're working together to achieve something and thirdly it's a word game and lots of people really enjoy games with words myself included um, and it's really fun to kind of test your limits with somebody else and see if they understand what you're you're trying to convey. Um, so I definitely recommend Codenames Duet. In my mind, Kingdom Builder is a wonderful game for two players. Um, so this is a game where there is a map of the board and what you need to do is to place your pile of little houses out there. The interesting portion is that you can only place your houses on the specific type of area that's revealed at the start of the turn. So one will say grass, one will say desert, and it means that you have to fill up all of the grass area before you're allowed to put your houses anywhere else. There'll be a series of objectives that you'll need to meet um, and that really is so important for where you're placing your houses or what it is you're doing. Um, I think the nice thing about Kingdom Builder is how chill it is and I particularly enjoyed it two player because it makes the game yet again kind of tactical. Two player seems to do that a lot but also I think this is a really nice game to sit side by side with the other player and have the board facing you as you're trying to work out where is the best place to go. Um, there's very little competitiveness going on in this game as you can both complete the same objectives and I think it makes it kind of fun and cosy to play. Domino is probably one of the fastest games to play that's on my list. 
Um, it's bright and it's colourful and basically you're building your kingdom with domino shaped pieces, hence the title. Now each domino shaped piece will have a different terrain type on it. So you're going to want to match the sandy pieces with the sand and the water with the water. Um, and that's not easy. It sounds easy but it's not as easy as you think. Um, it's very limited on how long it takes to play. And also this is another one like a Zul where you're grabbing things before your opponent gets a chance to. Um, the interesting thing with King Domino, however, is that if you want to like screw over your opponent, it's possible, but you might end up screwing over yourself. So you have to think about it quite seriously. Um, I love how pretty this game is, how fun it is to play. And it's definitely a game we're gonna want to play back to back again, um, because it just, it plays so quickly and it's just that much fun. Hannah Makoji is an incredibly clever two player only card game in which you're dealing with geishas and you want them to come and be on your side. And so this game is about pushing and pulling, using the cards in your hands and the unique type of actions to outwit your opponent. It's very clever, it's very quick, and I think it's beautiful when set up on the table. And I think that kind of heads up combat without directly affecting each other makes for a really interesting game. Some of my favourite two player games are card games and I think there's an awful lot of them to choose from. Some of my favourites though come from White Wizard games, so you have games like Star Realms which is you know buying spaceships, um, having combat against each other, um, it's really really cool especially if you like the space theme. But my favourite is actually Epic. So Epic is a card game in which you play cards from your hand and they're all amazing. Everything is amazing. And there's no mana in this game or cost to playing things. You get one gold to spend a turn and all of the creatures and all of the spells cost one gold. Um, and I think that's a really, really interesting and fun way to play a game. You don't have to be hassling about one thing or another. You just play the best cards and you don't even have to build a deck. Um, and so that's something I particularly enjoy at two player. So I'm gonna try step it up a notch here in terms of card games. And I'm a really big fan of Aeon's End. So this is a game that you play cooperatively together where you and whoever you're playing with um, are trying to take down a boss basically. And you do this by buying cards to put in your deck and using them. Um, so this kind of deck building game is really, really interesting on its own, but I love playing it with somebody else. You know, you work together as a team. Sometimes you can play cards on each other. And overall, I think it creates a really great bonding experience particularly at two, where you're struggling together to overcome the odds to come out on top. Many Euro style games don't really encourage interaction between the players. And I think Raja of the Ganges is kind of a bit of a step out from that while still getting that kind of cool puzzly Euro game feel. So Rash of the Ganges is a game basically about progressing in various ways. Um, there are multiple tracks around the boards which, which you have to maneuver. You get to build your own private board and move along that. Um, you can travel up a river. In fact, there's a whole host of things going on in this kind of worker placement game. What's really interesting about it is, is that, yeah, you can definitely feel like you're playing your own game. However, it is technically a race and it's whoever manages to go around their tracks and have them match first is the winner. I think there's something very, very chill about it with a very mild competitive edge. And I think at two players, this might be this game's sweet spot. It's quite a busy board and there's a lot going on, um, but I think it's a really satisfying play at two. So we haven't mentioned anything for you dungeon lovers yet. Perhaps if you're into role playing games or you just like delving into the dark, I think having one good dungeon game to play with two is, is important. Um, and there's only one I can name I think that's fantastic at two players and this is Gloomhaven. Hold on to your wallets folks. 
Gloomhaven is big, very, very big, and pretty expensive. Um, but I do think it's worth the money. You get a lot in the box for the price. But Gloomhaven is a game where you take on the role of characters. You go through various scenarios and dungeons fighting monsters. You can level up, you can change classes. Um, there's a whole world of stuff in there um, to get to that you could be playing this for years and years and years just yet. Um, the nice thing about this at two is I think because it's cooperative, um, helping each other, working things out, knowing what the best situation is, is it's just it's a really fun experience. And it's really satisfying as well to, you know, finish a level or whatever because you just managed to do this and he did that just in time. I think there's something very really special about playing Gloomhaven at two. I think it makes it kind of you're very connected, I think is the best word. And I think that's sometimes what you want when you're playing a two player game. So for a heavier, pleasant game um, at two, I think I'd be remiss not to mention Keyflower. Um, there are a whole number of key games in this series, but Keyflower is definitely my favourite. And what Keyflower is about is basically like you're building your own town. You're putting all these buildings together to build things with a whole host of coloured meeples. Um, and you get to activate your buildings by putting meeples on them. Um, and the fun thing about this is that, yes, it's building. There's also a bidding portion at the start, which is, um, you know, it's all, that causes all of its own fun moments. The best thing about this game is that you can use other people's buildings that they've built in their own village. Um, it's a great way to screw people over, get what you want, and still have fun playing this really bright and cheery Euro game. I just, there's something so nice about playing Keyflower. I just find it really chill and relaxing, particularly it too, because there is that back and forth. So whatever you don't pick, your opponent can pick. And it gives you these kind of interesting decisions without being particularly taxing. Plus, it's really, really fun to see all your coloured meeples spread throughout your village and whatnot. So I, I would definitely recommend Keyflower. And last but not least, the most head-scratching game on my list, um, which I thought was fair because not everybody wants to play something easy, sometimes you want a challenge, is the Battlecon series. Um, now, if you're to look up Battlecon to, to purchase it, there's a whole number of different ones. There's like Devastations, there's Indines, um, but they all boil down to the same thing, which is that they have a series of characters inside of them. And what you do is you'll basically have a fighting match with your opponent. Um, each character you play is completely different and they have a hand of cards, right? So you play the cards, it'll move your cards around, they'll perform an action and you and your opponent fight on like little boards, you know, with spaces and you move back and forth da, 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 um, and you'll attack each other. Um, and this sounds probably not the most exciting thing, but the way the cards are put together is really, really fun and really, really smart. I love everybody's special abilities. And these are games I normally do terribly at where I'm head to head with my opponent. However, for some reason I can pull it out, I find if I you know, play the same character or the right character. And a lot of it is about preempting what your opponent's going to do. And I think this kind of game is a great way to get to know each other. You know, will you move forward one now? Will you pretend to do that? Should I do that? Um, and I think there's a, a whole host of kind of guessing and unspoken communication that goes on when playing Battlecon. Also, it's eminently satisfying when you actually manage to pull out a victory. Sure, this is a bit of a head scratcher, but I think it's a really, really good one. Um, and it's definitely one of my favorite two player games. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I could have added a ton more to this video, but you know, we don't want it to be overly long. But let me know what you think I might have missed out on. What are some of your favorite two player games? Let's hear it in the comment box below. Let, let everybody know what's fun to play it too. And until next time, thanks for watching. If you've got any comments or queries, um, why not you know ask? That would be great. Or if you like my videos, you can like or subscribe to the channel to hear about future ones. So take care everybody. It was fun talking to you. And until next time, ta -ra!